Hello everybody, E here. Uh, welcome to my inner sanctum. This is my bedroom and this is where I'm going to have to film for a little while. So please excuse the very generic background. We will be back in the new, well, we will be in the new studio slash office hopefully next week. I don't know. Um, I apologize for my absence also. Literally, we've been moving all this stuff, um, boxes, and just getting the office built and all that stuff. So, thank you for being patient. Anyways, on with the review. Today, we are talking about Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. Um, okay, uh, hopefully, this will be one of those reviews that, uh, one of these negative reviews that sells the book. Uh, do I recommend the book? Hell no, I don't re recommend the book. If you go on to Goodreads, if you read any reviews, everybody is saying they don't recommend the book because to recommend this book would be to recommend some of the most vile content I have ever read or seen. Um, this book is on par with a Serbian film. Um, I only have one good thing to say about it. And I've taken my time. I finished this early January. It's one of my first, uh, f first books that I finished this year. And the, the very first thing, the only positive thing I have to say is that it is very well written. I never wanted to put it down because of the writing, because of the voice, or anything like that. But I look for three things in a book, and at the end of the day, it did not deliver on two major ones. And the content, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, because I'm going to talk about it in spoilers. Um, so for those of you who want to know whether or not I recommend it, I do not recommend it. But if I know my fans, like I know my fans, or my viewers, whatever you want to call yourselves, uh, this will make you go out and buy the book anyways. So the writing is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with the writing. Um, the audiobook is well produced. Uh, I got it free in exchange for this review that you're watching now. Um, at, anyways, let's just go ahead and get right in to the nasty stuff. So everything from this point on is going to be a spoiler. If you've not read the book, I am going to spoil everything for you. Um, so I highly suggest that you, uh, if, if you haven't read it, do, you don't need to be here. Um, if you're planning to read it, if you have no plans to read it, then fine, hang around. Um, the book, the book follows a main character who is a necrophiliac. Um, he's a security guard at a hospital, so he has access to bodies all the time. Um, there are some very, I, I don't know, some very unbelievable scenes uh, where, like, one person is dying in bed, and she's like, I love being raped, so please, you know, rape my corpse or whatever. Um, it just wasn't believable. Not that it was over the top or that, you know, is offensive because it was rape or anything. It's not really rape because she's consenting, that kind of thing. I don't know, man. It just, it just felt silly. Um, it felt forced. And that's like the, that's the smallest of my complaints. Uh, the story escalates when he meets a pediatrics, OBGYN, OB I can't remember. Um, I, like I said, I finished it over a month ago. Um, meets, and she has... Her, her quirk is she likes eating uh, babies, uh, dead babies. So <clears throat> um, th there's several scenes of eating infants. There's several scenes of necrophilia. Uh, very, very, uh, very, very in-depth description. Uh, Morrison was obviously, I hope I'm getting his name right. I forgot to look before. It's either Morrison or Morgan. Um, I apologize if the author watches this. Um, but he's got other things he's going to have problems with. So, um, the, uh, th there's one scene in particular that really harkened back to a Serbian film. Was it worse than a Serbian film? I don't know. It's on par. I mean, trash is trash, right? Um, there, there's a scene where he's, the necrophiliac is having sex with the dead baby. Um, and it just, I don't know. I don't care to read that stuff. You know, it's just not something it wasn't really offensive or tricky. It's like, why? I just, I, I don't, I don't care. Um, but the, the thing escalates to, to this, to this ending that was phoned in right from the time that the husband is, uh, is introduced, even though you don't know it's the husband, you know, it's the husband. Um, but the more I think about it, the more, the more upset I am about how derivative 
it is. Um, it it feels like Clive Clevenger and Chuck Palahniuk, but without the depth of those two authors. Um, it just feels like at this point that, you know, and here's coming from me, the guy who wrote South of Here and Betting of Boys and all that stuff. It just feels like at this point we're just trying to out-offend each other. Um, the more that people are worried about triggers, um, and I'm one of those people, I have my own triggers, so I'm not denouncing that. What I'm getting at is the more people, you know, com complain about no trigger warnings or they want trigger warnings, that kind of thing, it seems like the more people are pushing those boundaries. I put trigger warnings in my novel South of Here. This book definitely needs them. Um, there were certain, there were certain scenes that it just went on too long. It got to a point where I, I became desensitized and then, you know, automatically and sorry about the light. I know it's dark in here. Can't do anything about that. Cause if I turn on the one light that I have, the, the whole image is going to be blown out. So what there just, I don't know. They, it, it, there was a lot of redundant stuff. It's it's almost like it's a romance. I think even they describe it as an auto as an erotic romance or something like that. There's nothing romantic about this book. There's nothing erotic about this book unless you fancy you know screwing dead people or eating babies or any of that kind of thing. Um, I guess there's a little bit of the outliers coming together, you know, outcasts meeting up and whatnot, whatever it, but the, the main thing, the reason why I'm going to give this one star instead of the five, cause I said I was stuck between one and five, the content, I, I really like when authors push bound boundaries, but this felt like that was the whole purpose of this story. So, uh, the more I thought about it and the more, um, derivative, uh, I found it, especially with uh, Invisible Monsters. I mean, there's whole scenes taken out of Invisible Monsters that are in here almost note for note. Um, it's just, you know, of course, change of characters, change of scenery, that kind of thing. But it's the same setups. Um, it did feel a lot like Clive Clevenger, like the Contortionist Handbook. I remember reading that one. And he sounds... Chan Chandler Morrison sounds much more like Clive Clevenger than Chuck Palahniuk, but Clive Clevenger is nowhere near as big as Palahniuk. I think he only has, uh, think Clevenger only has two books out, but whatever. Uh, th this author obviously wears um, his inspirations on his sleeve, and good for you for writing something appalling. I don't, I don't know what to, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know the intention of this, so I can only go with what I felt in the story. Um, if there was more, oh yeah, and there was a strong fight club, uh, just a Polonic vibe to the whole thing where it's like, you know, don't be a, don't be a lemming in society, that kind of thing. It's just so many other books have done that concept better and were more shocking than this one because you actually cared about the characters or you understood the characters and their motivations. In this one, the characters fell flat for me. Everything felt like the plot was racing forward, and that's fine. But, so it's paced, it's paced wonderfully. I look for character, dread, and pacing. It's paced wonderfully. I didn't have any dread because he phoned in the, the twist way too early. I mean, as soon as it came up, I was like, okay, the, the, that's definitely, it's definitely her husband and that's his baby. And, you know, she's going to end up cutting herself open, eating the baby, and he's going to fuck her corpse. I mean, there's, there's nowhere else for this to go, right? Um, so I... <laughs> But it, the, again, it's just the kind of content that I feel like a lot of you out there are going to watch this review and run out and buy it. Um, it's just that it's not, I don't see the point of it. Um, and I know you don't really have to see the point of something to enjoy it or, you know, whatever. But this one, it felt derivative. It was full of redundancies, just the same thing over and over and over again. Thank fuck it was short. It's only like a four hour audiobook. Um, so here's where I'll start, stop. Uh, I don't really don't know what else to say about this. I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. So that's another reason why I'm leaning at leaning to one. Um, but I didn't just not enjoy it because of the content. It had a lot to do with just the same thing over and over again and knowing where we were going. Um, so, but have you read this book, uh, Dead Inside? What did you think of it? Uh, most horror fans absolutely love it because they're looking for that kind of content. I am not looking for that kind of content. 
Um, the dread was absolutely killed by the predictability of it. Uh, the characters stunk, I thought. And they weren't, not just because they were terrible people, but I just, I didn't give a shit. I just didn't. Um, but if you read it, let me know what you thought about it down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, for stuff like this, please remain respectful. If not, I'll just remove you and then hide you from the channel and you'll be screaming into the void. But, uh, uh, yeah, just leave your comments down there in the doobly-doo. Let me know if... You, I, I mean, I, I've heard from people who liked it, but is there anybody else out there who didn't like it? If you didn't, uh, definitely hit me up down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.